Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you two products from Rodless Reel. One is the Survivor series, and the other one is the UFO series. Now, these things are little bushcraft reels. Obviously, there is no rod attached, hence the name Rodless Reel. And I just want to give a big thanks to Miles from Rodless Reel for sending me these to make this video to show you guys. Now this one called the UFO was to be the main focus of the video so I think we'll start with that one. Once you've seen both of them please let me know what you think in the comment section and if you're interested in either of these I will put the link to Rodless Reel in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Before we take a close look at this I'll just show you the nice little bag that both of these reels arrived in. Thank you very much again. Okay, so that is our UFO rodless reel. And if you notice, it's got a little handle on here, which folds away neatly in there. And when you want to deploy it, you simply line it up, drop the handle out, and I've attached a little lanyard here so that I can hold it better like that that holds it in very very well because unfortunately I have King Charles sausage fingers and I can't get my fingers through here properly a lanyard also stops it from dropping in the water and getting lost as well so in here we've got bearings between the inner part and the outer part and that allows us to reel it in instead of manually winding it on which can lead to all sorts of misses and messes as you've probably seen in my previous videos where we've been looking at other sorts of reels most noticeably the oh god what was it called yoyito reel or cuban hand line um that i was missing all the time it was an absolute nightmare and it was absolutely impossible to use spinners on that one and I always like to use spinners whenever I can with little things like this because you just chuck them in, quickly reel them back and then bang. You know, as long as the, there's fish there and the conditions are right. You've seen me do that on numerous occasions. Okay, so I've loaded this up with six pound nylon. That is any amount thick enough for the small rivers around me. Unfortunately, it's been raining a lot lately. It's the end of the season and our rivers are pretty high and coloured and full of leaves. So I'm not going down there today. We're just going to be on my pond. Not sure I'm going to catch any fish though because it's getting cold and they've gone off the feed. All right, on the end of there, I've attached a little snap swivel and that will enable me to fix spinners on very, very quickly. Like so. Very quick. And if you're using spinners, especially this type, which is the Fox Rotating Spinner. Uh, it's actually called Fox Vibrax Spinner. These are my favorite spinners for trout. If you're using these, you've really got to use a swivel, so you may as well use a snap swivel, and it makes it a lot easier to detach and attach the various spinners you're gonna be using. And to cast it, it's just the same as any other little bushcraft fishing kit. You just point it forwards and throw out your bait or your spinner. Just like this. And then you reel it in. Now just a little tip for anybody using this. I've found that when you chuck it out and you start to reel it in, you've got to just have a quick look to check that you're holding it straight and your line is directly underneath the reel because if it isn't and you start reeling it in it just wraps around your fingers and so on as long as you just check it only takes half a second just have a quick look and then start reeling it in you'll be fine I'll just see if I can zoom in a little bit just to give you a close-up of reeling in because it does reel in very fast.
So that's the spinner test passed. And the spinner test for one of these types of reels is the most difficult test for it to pass. As far as land and fish on it, I haven't actually caught one yet. So I don't know about that. But on Miles's channel, on the Rodless Reel YouTube channel, he does catch a pretty big carp on exactly this reel. And as soon as he hooked it, I was thinking, he has no chance of landing that fish. But he played it. He was taking line, he was holding it back. He was, you know, using his, his hand as a brake. And he controlled the fish and landed it and then released it. And I watched the, watched the video. I'm not gonna tell you how big it was, but for anybody who's caught anything on any sort of like bushcraft fishing kit, you look at that and think, that's a bloody big fish, you know? He did well. Yeah, I really like that. It works very well. It's smooth, it's reasonably quiet. And once you've got, you know, some sort of thing to go around your hand, it's pretty comfortable to hold. It's not gonna get lost. Holds plenty of line, it's easy to chuck out. The spinner goes for miles, as you've hopefully seen. It's easy to reel back, but you do have to just watch. As soon as you've chucked it out, just watch that the line is lined up underneath here, because if it isn't, you'll get into a tangle. The more you use it, the better you get at using it. They're very well made. It looks nice. It doesn't take up much space in your pack. Folds down, very, very small. And as long as you've got some sort of lanyard, or in this case, a bit of paracord to stop it being pulled out of your hand or dropping out of your hand and falling in the river and being lost, it's a pretty good option. Yeah, so that's the UFO reel from Rodless Reel. Check it out. Links in the video description and in the pinned comment. <laughs> okay then. So as far as I can gather, this is the one that started Miles on his journey to making bushcraft fishing kits. Where the hell's the line? There we are, right. This one is really small. As you can see, it's got finger holes here, so it points in the right direction. It's easy to point in that direction when you're chucking it out and just flip it round, start reeling it in. Very simple. Uh, it feels exceptionally light. God, I mean, it's made of plastic, so it weighs next to nothing. And I'll be interested to see how this one does because I haven't used this one prior to shooting this video. So on this setup, I've got a little rubbery grub. I love these and the trout love them as well. That is something everybody needs in their survival kit, uh, survival fishing kit anyway, because sometimes the ground's so hard or so dry or so cold, so frozen that you can't find proper bait. That is an excellent backup. And then about a foot up from there, or 12 inches, or 30 centimeters, I've got a, not trout master, what the hell's it called? Oh, trout magnet float. Don't know how I forgot that. These are my favorite floats. And just in case you're not familiar, I'll show you how they fit on the line. Basically, we've got like a polystyrene type float with a split in it that goes all the way to the middle. So we put our line in the split where are we? There we are. See how the line goes in and out of there? Set it to what height we want. And then there's a little stopper goes in the top. Just like that. Absolutely class these things. I'll link to all of this stuff in the video description. Yeah, that wasn't a bad chuck considering how little weight we've got on the end of here. Now what I really like about this one is, when you're reeling it in, you can't miss the reel on that side. And if you miss it on that side, the line just falls off and you'll catch it next time round. It can't get tangled up like it can on really anything else. So in effect, that one is unique because you're not holding it here and the risking it getting tangled up in your fingers. You're holding it away from the actual reel part and I haven't missed the reel once, even though it's tiny. 
That's a real plus point for this. Hopefully you could see that. That was a decent chuck. It went maybe 12 yards or 12 meters, thereabouts. Considering the size of this thing, that is a good chuck. And also considering the fact that there's hardly any weight on it. Yeah, I really like this one as well. I haven't caught any fish, unfortunately, but that day will come and you guys will be there to see it, albeit through the screen. But just as an initial test, using spinner and float, I think both of these things perform pretty well. Now the design of both of these things is pretty unique and I have to applaud Miles for what he's done here because they're totally different and he was talking about discontinuing this one, the Survivor series, but I think there's a place for both. That is just so small, compact, exceptionally light uh, and it's a lot cheaper than that one. So you've got two pretty different products that do the same job at different price points and both work well. Really which one you go for is your choice. But I think that choice should be maintained. So Miles, if you're watching this, don't give up on making those. I really like that. And of course, I really like that as well. And just to illustrate how compact these reels are, I'll show you them in comparison to my smallest telescopic fishing rod. That is what I carry with me, believe it or not, when I'm fly fishing. And if I can't get somewhere with a fly, I'll just bust this little lad out. That's the Survivor Series reel, next to it. And that is the UFO reel next to it. There's a big difference. And I suppose the million dollar question is, would I choose any of the bushcraft fishing kits or fishing reels over a proper rod and reel? And I pretty much answered that in that hour long video where I showed loads of different setups. My first choice would always be a rod and reel because you've got the ability to cast much further, you've got the ability to play the fish a lot easier so you can potentially land fish quicker and you'll certainly be able to land bigger fish without the risk of losing your gear. Um, a rod and reel just offers you so much versatility but in the absence of that either of these would take up next to no space in your pack and it would give you the ability to chuck a bait or a spinner quite a distance and use it effectively and certainly land plenty of fish. So there is definitely a place for these, especially in a little day pack, because you don't want to be carrying a, a rod and a reel around in a little day pack really, you know. Thanks again to Miles for sending me these and if anybody's interested in either of these from Rodless Reel, check out the links in the video description and also in the pinned comment. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching.